it's almost uh, 7.30, mga dalawang minuto pa ang natitira. So we have six watching us right now, and I'm very thankful for that. Uh, I see Ati Zeni is watching us. I see Ati Lot is watching us, and a couple more that are watching us. So I'm very thankful for that. Um, Mag-start tayo mga isa pang minuto. One more minute uh, before we begin. And let me encourage you to get your Bibles and get your notebooks. And if you have the study notes, you can look at your study notes as well. And we'll start in about one minute. Um, kinukumusta, ko, <clears throat> kinukumusta ko lang yung mga nandyan na nanonood. <clears throat> so, that's good. All right? Seven ang nanonood. All right, one more minute. One more minute. Magi start tayo, tapos babasahin ko yung mga comments ninyo afterwards. All right? So, um, bago tayo magi start, magpe-pray tayo. All right? Let's go ahead and open with a word of prayer. Manalangin muna tayo bago ang lahat. Father in heaven, we thank you, God, for the victory that you've given us through Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of prayer. And we also thank you, God, for what repentance is about and how through repentance we, we can have renewal in our lives and victory in our lives. Help us to realize the precious truths, the golden truths of this psalm, uh, number 60, as we explore the book of Psalms. And we just ask that you would do something eternal in hearts today. We thank you and ask that you bless us now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, well, uh, open your Bibles to the book of Psalm uh, number 60. Uh, we're looking at the book of Psalms, probing uh, through the book of Psalms. And today, uh, tonight, we are in Psalm number 60, Psalm 60, 60. <clears throat> now, yung mga uh, headings, these inspired headings, <clears throat> are part of the scriptures. These are not editor's notes, translator's notes. These are part of the Hebrew Masoretic text and they are preserved, inspired and preserved words <clears throat> um, directly from the Holy Spirit of God to David and then David wrote it down uh, through inspiration, God using his abilities and talents and skills and uh, experience uh, and he worked personally through David and so David wrote these words down <clears throat> and we have them with us today uh, and it's a little lengthier medyo mahaba ng konti compared to others pero importante pa rin at merong historical significance there really is a historical significance to these words uh, the psalm number 60 relates to a portion in David's life in his experience, uh, <clears throat> where he didn't necessarily experience victory, uh, but rather the opposite, uh, perhaps experiencing defeat at times. And more often than not, and you'll find this true in the Christian life, the low points in our life are usually the important points. And we gain more because of the negatives and the tears than we do uh, gain from the times of ease and joy. And so David learned something very precious in his defeats. And he brings this out uh, in a national lamentation. Um, remember, he is king and he experienced uh, uh, <clears throat> what it was like to 
be a voice or a representation of an entire nation, the, the, the nation of Israel. And uh, apparently Israel did not always win their battles. Uh, and so we gain something here from this defeat. <clears throat> now, Psalm number 60 opens with these words, to the chief musician. And again, alam na natin kung sino yung chief musician, that would be Asaph. Uh, <clears throat> 1 Chronicles chapter 25, verses 1 to 6, talk about, and other, there are many other passages on the chief musicians, uh, but we'll focus on 1 Chronicles 25, verses 1 to 6. Uh, <clears throat> so David composed this and then gave this to Asaph uh, for instruction, uh, so that when the children of Israel worship the Lord, uh, they, they would take heed, they would listen to the songbook of Israel. You know, sometimes it's, it would be good to take the hymn book and uh, study the teachings that are biblical in the hymn book. And uh, it's amazing how doctrine is encapsulated in our hymns. And the hymns, the hymn book, have a way of turning our focus heavenward or towards the Lord. That's why it's not just a hymn book. It is a hymn book, H-I-M, hymn book. <laughs> and the, the songs, of course, are they could minister to our spirits and be a blessing to us. And so uh, to the chief musician. Now here's an unusual word. Uh, Shushan Edith. Shushan Edith. Shushan Edith is only mentioned once, and it's in here, Psalm number 60. And it means the lily of the testimony, or the trumpet of the testimony. Of course, the lily uh, looks like a trumpet, uh, the flower, lily. <clears throat> and nung tinanong ko si nanay, ano ba yung lily sa Tagalog? You know, how do you translate lily in Tagalog? The word is lily. It's the same thing. So, yeah, walang, <clears throat> walang difference sa salitang lily sa Ingles o Tagalog. Uh, so, a lily of the testimony or a trumpet of the testimony. Shushan Edith. <clears throat> Miktam of David. Yung ibig sabi naman ng miktam, eto ay meditation or understanding uh, this is, again, gold, uh, something to think about, a golden poem, a golden song, uh, something to meditate about. And uh, certainly, David thought very uh, deeply and meditated upon these uh, experience, the experience of national defeat, the experience of repentance, and the experience of the renewal that repentance brings. So, very, very important. Uh, Miktam of David, to teach, meaning it's instructive hmm, for our instruction. Now, <clears throat> the historical setting, it continues on in Psalm 60. It says, when he strove with Aram Naharaim. Aram Naharaim. That just means the two rivers in Aram, or Syria, or Mesopotamia. So this is, David is not just fighting the Philistines in his local area. It's not just Jerusalem versus Philistines. Uh, it's, it's, it extends the borders of his warfare, goes all the way up to Syria, all the way up to Mesopotamia, and even into Iraq, modern day Iraq, or in the time of David, Aram Zoba, Aram Zoba, uh, <clears throat> the, the city uh, or the highland of Zoba over in Iraq. And so David fought battles near, locally, and national, uh, internationally geographic uh, warfare. Uh, Aram, let's see here, Aram na Haraim is the two rivers, plural. So it's the two rivers, Tigris and Euphrates River. <clears throat> and then the 
Aram Zoba is the uh, the highland of Zoba or Soba in Iraq. So uh, we have a, an understanding of the geographic significance of these words. So it's not just the history that's important, it's also important the geography. See, when you study the Bible, you should be familiar with events, people, places, history, and geography. Okay, and that's why, uh, katulad ng tinuturo sa atin ni Brother RJ, we should have biblical tools to help us identify where is Mesopotamia. Where is these two rivers, Tigris and Euphrates? Where is Zoba? Where is uh, uh, Syria? You know, where are these locations? Significant, very important. At wag lampasan. Don't uh, neglect these things. The study of the scriptures. We have to be biblical students of the word of God uh, in order to understand what we're talking about. So Psalm 60 uh, puts this in context geographically and historically. Um, when Joab returned and smote of Edom in the Valley of Salt, 12,000. When did that happen? Where did that happen? Oh, we go back to the Old Testament, the historical background to Psalm 60 is first, uh, Second Samuel. Chapter 8, Second Samuel, Chapter 8, and also First Chronicles, Chapter 18. First Chronicles, Chapter 18. So, basahin yun na lang uh, sa susunod some other time. <clears throat> when you have the time, look up First Second uh, Samuel 8 and First Chronicles 18, and you'll have a, a good understanding of when did Joab slay uh, these thousands of Syrian soldiers? When did David send Joab uh, to, to defeat the enemies hmm. uh, over in Syria? <clears throat> and you'll, you'll find that this is the historical context of Psalm number 60. And then so, yon uh, ang inspired heading. These are the inspired headings of Psalm 60. All right, so we looked at these things line upon line and it, uh, made some considerations. Now let's look at the outline, the overall outline of Psalm 60 para maunawaan natin kung ano yung pinag-uusapan ng Psalm 60. Ito yung mga bahagi ng Psalm 60. So we find the outline uh, <clears throat> it begins with rejection. Rejection or defeat. And you will see that in verses 1 and 3, tapos yung parallel niya, verses 9 and 11. So, def rejection. Re they, Israel was rejected by God because of sin. And uh, we, we're going to learn some important lessons here. All right, then number 2, yung ikalawang bahagi, confidence of victory. The confidence of victory. Uh, yes, we can be judged and have defeat because of sin, but it doesn't end in defeat if a if a believer repents. You can have victory if you repent. Uh, and so you find confidence of victory at the yung um, hope at the yung pagasa ng verse number four at saka verse number twelve. They parallel each other, uh, and they both. I could I could write B and then B on verse twelve, but I just consolidated it. Para um, simple lang yung outline. And last uh, bahagi, uh, you know, the last part would be prayer, and God's response to prayer, which forms really the heart of Psalm number sixty. Do you know that God responds to prayer? God is a prayer hearing God. He responds to prayer. Uh, why does God send trouble our way? It's because it's through the times of trouble we learn to pray. 
<clears throat> it's uh, it's a lot easier to to get on our knees and pray when we're in trouble. Unfortunately, that's the way we are. It's easy to forget God when things are going well. Unfortunately, that's how we are. And so God lovingly sends testings and trials in order to drive us to prayer. And that's the proper response of a believer. Now, if you respond in the flesh, it is failure. Uh, there will be no renewal. There can be no revival. There can be no joy if you respond in the flesh. But as a believer, if you respond by faith, trusting in the Lord, <clears throat> uh, repenting and turning to Him, then God renews. Remember, repentance always brings renewal. All right. So now, nakita natin itong basically tatlong bahagi. Rejection, but the confidence of victory and prayer. Now, tingnan natin ang Psalm number 60. Now we'll look at Psalm number 60 uh, with the time that we have uh, here, which I, I need to look at my... Uh, uh, <clears throat> Re recording device. So we're doing good. We're only 15 minutes into the lesson, so that's wonderful. All right. Uh, sabi ng Bible, let's look at Psalm 60, verse number 1. To the chief musician upon Shushan, Edith, uh, Miktam of David, to teach. Uh, when he strove with Aram Naharaim and with Aram Zoba, when Joab returned and smote of Edom in the valley of salt, 12,000. Uh, Edom, <clears throat> let me, let me uh, add to that. I didn't put this on my notes. But Edom is an uh, enemy of Israel that occupied the um, eastern, southeastern region beyond the Dead Sea. Nandun yung Edom. Uh, and what's unusual about Edom is the height of Edom. Uh, etong lungsod ay nasa taas ng bundok. And so napakahirap na subuin itong uh, Edom dahil nakatira sila sa taas ng bundok. Yung kweba ng mga bundok, dun sila naka, nakatira. It, Petra is found in Edom and it is a fortress city that was built on a mountaintop in the rocks. And so it was very difficult for Israel to defeat Edom. However, they were they, they were successful in doing that because Edom's pride, remember God hates pride. Edom thought they were invincible because of their high place, their pride. Hmm. And God is an expert at bringing pride down. Huh. And so you don't uh, we don't want to be a proud people. We want to be humble and ask God for help constantly. Mm. All right. So anyway, uh, Edom was defeated in the Valley of Salt. You can see where the Dead Sea is. It's a salty uh, region. 12,000. Oh, God. And here's the defeat. <clears throat> We're looking at the language of national lament. National defeat. Verses 1 and 3. And then verses 9 and 11. They parallel. Uh, notice the words of defeat, spiritual defeat and army, military defeat. O oh God, thou, ha <clears throat> thou hast cast us off. Thou hast scattered us. Thou hast been displeased. O oh, turn thyself to us again. Thou hast made the earth to tremble. Thou hast broken it. Heal the breaches thereof, for it shaketh. Thou hast showed thy people hard things. Thou hast made us to drink the wine of astonishment. Now, so this is, this is the experience. Uh, it's amazing. I like how Psalms puts words to human experience. And in this case, it's a, the, the experience of divine judgment because of sin. Now, uh, in, this, in the Bible, uh, you can remember, for example, Joshua and the defeat that they experience at Ai because of uh, the sin of Achan. Remember Achan? 
uh, uh, they def they were they, they they could not defeat Ai because of Achan. And so here David could not defeat the Syrian forces because God judged them because of their sin. In fact, God abandoned them, hmm. left them alone. And so <clears throat> we need to understand that God is holy and he doesn't go along with sin. God doesn't go along with sin. Uh, look over in uh, verse number 9 to 11, again the parallel, verse 9 to 11. Who will bring me into the strong city? Who will lead me into Edom? Wilt not thou, O God, which had cast us off? I mean, God cast them off because of their sin. Oh, um, oh, that and thou, O oh God, which did not go out with our armies. Uh, so God, they were expecting to fight and win because God was with them. They didn't understand. God withheld his presence because of sin. They were experiencing divine displeasure. Remember this. Sin always brings judgment. Lalo na kapag kristyano ka, ang kasalanan ay palaging nagdudulot ng hatol ng Diyos. Especially a Christian. Hmm. Kasi meron tayong Heavenly Father. Hindi niya tayo pinababayaan, pero kung hindi tayo gumawa ng tama, may sumpa at palo ang Diyos. That is the truth. If you're a born-again Christian, and you're in sin, God the Heavenly Father will make sure that you feel His displeasure. Yan yung sinasabi dyan sa verse number uh, 1. Yung sabi dun, Thou hast been displeased. Alright, so verse number 11. Give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of men. Oh, of man. Oh, that's true. <clears throat> Vain is the help of man. Sometimes man, man, they fail. They fail. Oh, we'll do this. And then all of a sudden they can't. <laughs> a failure. Hmm. That's why it's better to trust in the Lord. Uh, anyway, so <clears throat> uh, remember, uh, God is holy and he will judge sin. That's why it's important for Christians. You know, the blessing we have is... For every sin that we commit as a born-again Christian, there is the blood of Jesus Christ that's provided for us to cleanse us from our sin. God doesn't will for us to sin, but if we do sin, we have provision through Jesus for forgiveness and cleansing, but the condition of the cleansing is confession and forsaking of sin. But confessing that sin before God. You know, God is a faithful God. He is faithful and just to forgive. But we must repent in order to experience His divine cleansing and forgiveness. So again, repentance always brings renewal. Now, <clears throat> so look at the promise of victory. Verse number 4, the promise of victory, the, the confidence of victory. Verse number four, thou has given a banner to them that fear thee. Oh, okay, so God has a banner, a symbol of victory. Mm. <clears throat> that it may be displayed because of the truth. Sila. And sila again means pause, stop, and think about, meditate on the truth that was just mentioned. Usually the instrumentalists will play, but the singers will stop singing. That's sila. Uh, so God has given us assurance of victory. You know, uh, the Christian life is really a life of guaranteed overcoming victory. Uh, and if you're a Christian, and if you don't have victory for today, whose fault is it? You're a born again Christian, and you have no, you don't feel the victory today. Huh. That's your fault. You need to repent and renew and God will restore your soul as a, the good shepherd that he is. So, 
Uh, verse number 12, parallel to verse 4, a confidence of victory, verse 12. Through God we shall do valiantly, for he it is that shall tread down our enemies. You see that? Our victory is not through ourselves. It is through God. And so <clears throat> we must trust in the Lord, not upon ourselves. All right, so where does it all turn? How does it work? Through prayer. How do you repent? Through prayer. Uh, really, Christian is only a prayer away from getting right with God and experiencing the victory that God wants him to have. You get that through prayer. So look at verse number 5, and then we'll look at 6 and 8. 5, 6, six uh, 7 and 8. Uh, that thy beloved may be delivered. See that? God loves the, the believer. He is the beloved. And so I tell you, beloved, born-again Christian, use the provision of prayer. It's a, what a gift from God. Mm. Save with thy right hand and hear me. Oh, God is a prayer-hearing God. How often do you pray? Hmm? Do you bring to the Lord? Uh, are you serious about prayer? It is the avenue. It is the only way we can open our helplessness and allow God inside of our helplessness. It's through prayer. Verse number six, God had spoken in his holiness. Well, that's so significant. <clears throat> holiness. We're dealing with a holy God. I will rejoice and I will divide Shechem and meet out the valley of Sukkoth. Again, the geography here is uh, that God is going to bust up and destroy all the surrounding enemies of Israel. Uh, so the valley of Sukkoth and Shechem and Gilead is mine and Manasseh is mine and Ephraim also is the strength of mine head. So they all belong to God. Mm. Judah is my lawgiver. Moab, my wash pot. Now, Moab is again, uh, Edom is at the bottom, southeast. Moab is uh, uh, middle east beyond the Dead Sea. Again, the enemy of God, but God treats Moab as a wash pot. Just something that he can use. Hmm. Over Edom will I cast out my shoe. <laughs> God's going to bust up Edom, that high, proud place, that prideful city upon a hill, upon a rock, that fortress that seems so impossible. God says, I'm just going to throw my shoe at them. I'm just going to defeat them and bust them up and break them up. Hmm. Philistia triumph, thou because of me. <clears throat> and so, uh, Philistines, Philistia, the coastal city on the other side. Hmm. Um, they are no match for Jehovah God. So what enemies do you have? What enemies do you experience? You have enemies on the left and on the right. You have enemies in the north and the south. You have enemies in your future. You have enemies in your past. You have, you're surrounded by uh, struggles and testings and trials. What do you do? It is an opportunity to turn to, to the Lord. He never forsaken us, never abandoned us, but has given us provision for cleansing and renewal through repentance and prayer in Jesus Christ because of his name. So, tremendous experience here. <clears throat> what is your attitude towards God's holiness? His dealings with sin in our lives. The displeasure of God because of sin. And uh, we learn through Psalm 60, and we're thankful to the Lord, that we can have victory through prayer and repentance, but we must ask God for cleansing and confession and forgiveness. So be renewed in our mind tonight. So Psalm 60. At alalahanin natin yung mga, ka yung mga kalaban natin, yung mga pagsubok na nararanasan natin, dapat dinadala ho natin yan sa pamamagitan ng pagsisisi at pananalangin. Alang-alang kay Yesu Kristo, 
bibigyan ho tayo ng sagot ng Diyos. Hunt, uh, uh, hintayin natin ang sagot ng Diyos. <clears throat> At iwasan ang kasalanan para hindi tayo ma Uh, uh, maranasan yung sumpa at talo ng Diyos. And so, we find these things very, very true and precious in the life of a believer. What a golden poem. What a miktam of David. Psalm number 60. Let's pray and ask the Lord to bless them. Father in heaven, we thank you, God, that you are a holy God and that you are concerned about uh, giving us victory in our lives, but you won't go along with sin. And so, Father, we confess and we ask that you cleanse us. Help us to renew our minds through repentance that we may draw closer to you and experience the victory that you will have us to have. Us trusting in you instead of man. Us trusting in you instead of circumstances and events. Uh, help us to, to uh, see beyond situations And unto you, Lord, knowing that you are a holy God and a heavenly Father to us because of Jesus. We ask that you bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right. so salamat po sa pakikinig uh, sa mga nanonood uh, dyan sa uh, dyan si Ate Eleanor, uh, si Ate Jenica, uh, si Ate uh, Rosalia. Hello and um, others that are watching us uh, uh, um, throughout this. Now, I understand yung iba uh, manunood mamaya or later or whatever, so that's good. I'm glad. Subaybayan ninyo yung mga pinag-aaralan nating Psalms. Next week, uh, next Wednesday, we're going to look at Psalm number 61 and Psalm number 62. Dalawang Psalms. Dalawang awit ang pag-aaralan natin next uh, Wednesday. Uh, <clears throat> and then, uh, just uh Continue to work through the book of Psalms. Again, if you need study notes, itong mga study notes natin, available siya uh, via email. Pwede ko kayong i-email. Uh, mag-request lang ho kayo sa messenger o di kaya uh, sa email address na provided naman sa Facebook page natin. Uh, sa mga Mount Zion uh, members, huwag kalimutan linggo, araw ng Panginoon. Uh, maghanda para sa araw ng Panginoon Uh, wag kayong maging late at um, serve God and praise Him and worship Him and then uh, do ministry work for Him uh, early and on time, on point, on purpose. All right, and uh, <clears throat> thank you so much for your time. We'll see you in some. Uh, we'll see you next week. All right, all right. God bless you.